Good morning, everybody, and thank you for attending the Rotolec Express webinar on Fortress Interlocks. I'm Peter Gabriel, your Fortress Product Specialist at Rotolec, and will be your host for the next 10 minutes. I have over 30 years experience with the Fortress products and look forward to helping you with any application you may have. Our special guest today with us is Fred Brassard, the Canadian Territory Sales Manager for Fortress. Fred brings with him over 12 years of application experience as well. Fortress manufactures several groups of safety interlocks for a wide range of applications for customers like you. They include steel, aluminum, automotive, wood, pulp and paper, mining and packaging. It's safe to say if you have an application, we will have a product for you. Today, we're focusing on the AmGuard product range and the exciting new product called Frank. Fred will now walk us through a high level presentation on these unique, robust products and at the end, I'll come back to answer any questions you may have entered into the chat field. Thank you. Over to you, Fred. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to spend 10 minutes with you today during this Hotelec Express webinar. We are going to talk about the new concept family or the new family of products called Frank. Frank stands for Fortress RFID Access Network. Our goal with this product is to have access to the machine and give access to the employees to the machine only at the right time and when we decide to do so. Only certain employees will have access to the machine and this product gives you the capacity or the capability to decide who has access to it. The system is quite simple. It is basically a database with door locks on every door. We also have a configuration software, which we call the master software, which would give you access to that database and enable you to be 100% sure that only approved personnel can have access. Let me give you an example of how this system would work. So in this example, you have a worker who wants to go inside a specific area that is closed off with guards. In this area, he has a box that he wants to place back onto the conveyor. To, in order for him to be able to go inside the enclosure, he first has to identify himself. So he would use its own uh, ID card, so his own RFID ID card, and he would present it in front of a reader that you would see here at the door on the unit. In this reader, what you will do is this system would send the information from his ID card to our database that is local. The database would cross-reference this information with whatever was inputted before and decide if the person has the right to go or not into the enclosure. If it decides that the person does not have the right to go in, it would prevent him from doing so and just put a red light on the, uh, at the door. If it decides that the person has the right to go in, then it would send a signal to the PLC, and this signal would be a request to enter input. The PLC would then look at the machine and the different dangerous conditions. It would probably stop the robots in this case, send it to a park position, and once all of those conditions are met, it would unlock the door and enable the person to open the door. The operator would then open the door, go in and replace or put the box back onto the conveyor. What I want to point out to you in this system is that the card that the employee uses is a standard card. It is the card that was issued to the employee by your factory. It's not something that has to be a special card. The reader at the door is an industrial reader. It is not a commercial reader. It is something very sturdy for an industrial environment. There was no change to the PLC program. All that the PLC saw is a request to enter that will enable it to make its own decision then based on the dangerous condition in the enclosure. There's also no logging of information into the PLC. All of this information is logged into our database, which is separate from the PLC. So the employee does not have access to the database and nobody can modify the database 
which still is local to the machine. Once the employee is done and the box has been placed back into the conveyor, the employee would come out of the enclosure and he would have to close the door and present his badge again so that the system would see that he is outside of the system. This would send a signal to our database, which would again tell the PLC that the conditions are met uh, from our standpoint. The PLC would look at the robot enclosure and make sure that we are still in a position where you can actually restart the machine. It would lock the door again. The employee would have to look at the whole area and make sure that the conditions are met from his point of view. Then he could press restart or restart the machine through a active action in this case. Again, the local controller would then log the data of what just recently happened and make it available for us to peruse later. This is done from the offices with a master software. And this master software will enable you to do two things. You could establish or change the level of permissions of who can go in at what time, or you could also consult the logged data to know who went into the machine over the last period of time and who has done what to this machine from the point of view of badging in and badging out. On the next slide, I would like to show you a little bit of what the system looks like in a little bit more detail. So we have the interlock that is at the door. Uh, this interlock would communicate through, in this case, Ethernet IP on this machine, but it could be either Ethernet IP or Profinet. It communicates the information both to a PLC and to our local controller, which I told you holds all the data, which would then communicate to a master controller, which is a software that would enable you to look at this data. What I want to point out here is that the local controller is local, obviously, and this connection can be severed and the machine still works. So if you have a problem with communication between the offices and the plant, this is completely independent and it will not be slowed down by problems with communication. The system also enables you to look at the data in a very convivial manner or convivial way. Uh, what you have in here is that the ID of your card could be either a numeric or an alphanumeric uh, number, depending upon the type of card that you have, but we will translate the information to show the name of the employee. And obviously this is where you would enter some data uh, about who can go in at what time, but it would also give you the um, logged data as a log or come in per name. Obviously, the system is very flexible also, and there are loads of other applications that you could attack with this type of system. The first one that we've shown you is a physical access to an area, but it can do more than that. What I want to show you here is access to an HMI, for example, where you can have certain employees have access to certain pages of your HMI and not others. A good example of this is, for example, electricians that can have certain tasks that are different from the other employees or the operators of the machine, which would be able to do them only by having access to certain pages on your uh, HMI. You wouldn't want to have access to those uh, or to give access to those pages uh, to other employees. So you can restrict access based on the card that is presented in front of the reader. Another thing that you can do is you can use it as a counting station and we see this for areas where people have to come and evaluate the condition of the machines uh, in visual on a regular basis. Uh, a certain environment will require a, uh, um, let's say somebody to uh, look at the machine and make sure that uh, the machine is in working order during the night a couple of times during the night. So you would swipe your card in front and just push a button and it would log that you have passed in this area and looked at the machine. It's kind of a signature if you want. Another thing that we can do with this is that we can give you access to certain function of the machine based on the card that you carry with you. Uh, 
So with a certain card, you could reprogram a robot and it would identify that you have done this from a certain time or at a certain time and uh, you would be able to restrict access to certain people uh, at the same time as you log the time of the modification. All of this ties back into the same master controller, even though it could be different local controllers based on the areas in your plant. The master controller enables you to look at the data or modify the permissions, but in this case, since it doesn't run the machine, it's only connected at certain times. Let's look at the units in more detail. Um, the door lock that you would use for physical access is actually a standard door lock that we have um, slightly modified. So what you see here is a handle, in this case with an internal release capability uh, attached to the system uh, where you would have obviously an RFID reader. And this one, as I said, is an industrial version of the RFID reader, which is housed into a metal enclosure to be perfectly well protected. <clears throat> In this case, the operator wanted to have different lights to identify what was happening and tell the operator, you have access, you don't have access, or you're ready to restart the machine, for example. What we have here is a button where you can have a restart function, for example, which gives you full control of the functions of your machine. One option that is often also added to the system is a safety key, and this key would be a key that would stand into the lock while the machine is running, and if you want to enter the machine, on top of having to badge in and badge out, you would actually take the key, take it out, put it in your pocket, depress this little lever, which would then open the door. Uh, this key would actually protect you if you go into a large cell and large enclosure, making sure that even if you are behind the robot and everything else has failed uh, for some reason, you also have a physical protection while you go inside. The second type of location is a bit simpler and where we have RFID badge uh, access to an HMI. In this case, obviously, you do not have a door lock on the unit. You would simply have buttons. And in most cases, those are very simple applications where you would have a green and a yellow button on this example here, plus the RFID reader and an e-stop for your machine. The next application that I want to show you is something a little bit more interesting. And in this case, it's built for bigger machines. What you see here is a, an employee coming into the machine from one side and then a second employee coming into the machine. So let's say the machine is very big and you want to enter from one side and exit from the other side. This would be possible with our system. It's an application that is very difficult in most instances, but it, in this case, you can see that even if the first employee gets out and tries to badge out, the door doesn't lock again. It waits until the second employee has come out and badged out before it will enable you to log the machine again. The employee would look at the enclosure, make sure that everything is done, and then he could restart the machine again. This is especially useful for bigger machines, those types of machines where you have, let's say, a paper mill machine that is 60 foot long, where you would like to enter from one end and exit from the other end for certain parts of your process. Obviously, you need to be protected through all this, and we want to make sure that the people exit even if they don't go through the same door. This concludes our little 10 minute presentation. Um, I would like to send then uh, give the control back to Peter Gabriel and we will look at the questions that you may have had during this presentation. Back to you, Peter. Hey Fred, that was great, thank you. It looks like we do have a couple. The first one that popped up here was do the controllers need to be physical devices or can they be installed as software on existing computers slash controllers? Uh, yes, Fortress has physical controllers they can sell to you or yes, the software can be sold to you for, for installation on existing um, hardware that you may have on site, which is great. 
it's really flexible that way. Um, some other questions we saw come through was, uh, can the RFID card act as a safety device and replace a key or lock? The, the purpose of that card is to request to enter. And it also then accumulates data on the computer software to show who's been in the cell, how long they're in the cell, what the frequency of access into that cell, so you can get some diagnostics. You can also then create permission levels that only certain employees will have the ability to badge into that particular workstation on a given day. So it gives permission levels. And same with, as Fred mentioned, about at the HMI levels where we can, where passwords are often handed around. Uh, this way now the badge has to be present to be used to gain access to that HMI as a possibility. Um, the other question we had here was how many systems can run at once? Well, the architecture can be set up to whatever you need it to be, whether it's five interlocks or 25 interlocks, it all depends on how many cells that are operating in the areas, how, to how far we can go. But uh, I'm sure we would love to see applications like that where you're looking at networking, say 100 access points. Uh, I'm sure we'll come up with a solution for that. Uh, with regards to the RFID cards, a question was asked about, do we have access to all of the RFID cards that are available. What we simply ask for is that if you have an application you want us to look at, we will probably need a sample of the card to send to our lab to make sure that we can connect and talk to that RFID card. And if we don't have the correct frequencies, we can certainly get the right uh, cards that are required for that application so that it will be seamless that you'll be able to use your employee card to badge in and badge out. And then about a working demo, uh, it's been asked if we have a demo that we can show around, whether it would be physically um, or virtually, we can do both. Uh, Fred carries a, an operating demo kit with him of the Frank system, and uh, we can certainly make it available. If for COVID reasons we can't get into the plant, we can certainly do a virtual presentation as well. Uh, so that basically concludes what we've had so far come in. So uh, what we want to do right now to keep this to our, our, our limit is uh, thank you for attending the Rodelec Express webinar on the Fortress Frank system. And we look forward to having to work with you on any applications you may have. Please feel free to reach out to any of your local I'm sure if they get stumbled up on this, they can call myself or Fred to help them through the process of uh, setting up a Frank system. And next month, the topic that we'll be working on is gonna be robot units. We'll be demonstrating to you the conveyors, linear actuators, and their truly unique line of extruded aluminum uh, and fasteners that use the world-class principle of lean. So we, we look forward to seeing you guys next month and we really appreciate your time this morning and take care and have a safe day.